Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic is one that I have received numerous requests for, and finally we're getting to it, thank God. But wink, is it bad? Is it good? I don't know if many people said good. When some people do the the dancing, they but they wink the butt up and down, and that seems to uh that's that's nice to look at every now and again. But if your lower back is rounding at the bottom of a squat, ooh, not as nice. So let's figure out what butt wink is and if it's bad and if it is bad, how we can remediate it. So technical definition here, at least an attempt, butt wink in my view is when your hips tilt down under you at the bottom of a lower body pressing move, which means you're training quads. Squats are a very common offender, uh, sometimes on the leg press uh, and or not as often, but every now and again on the hack squat as well. I can think of at least five reasons for having butt wink. One is poor technique. By the way, we'll have a separate slide on each one of these. One is poor foot positioning. One is poor ankle mobility or low ankle mobility, a limited range of motion. Another one is poor glute flexibility. And the last one is a hip bone structure. I was going to say problem, but really just uh, limited uh, bone structure in the hips that prevents a certain range of motion. Uh, in other words, deep hip sockets. Something about that sounds dirty, but it's not, you would think. All right, so poor technique. How does it happen? Why does it cause butt wink? Well, a lot of times people just don't know that they have to have the pelvis anteriorly tilted so that their butt wink doesn't round their lower back, and they just don't know. And sometimes, because they don't know that, they realize... Well, I seem to be stronger in my squat if I sit back as much as I sit down. And then because they're sitting back really far, in order for them to hit proper depth, they have to get the range of motion somewhere and it comes from the lower back when the hips tilt and that's what happens. So a lot of times that technique is something they just don't know about that they have to be doing. So there are a few technique fixes that in many, many, many cases, butt wink is completely eliminated altogether. So yes, of course, these other ones – other reasons for butt wink, we're absolutely going to talk about them, and they may very well be the case with you or folks that you train. But a lot of times, technique just kiboshes this whole thing altogether. So first is chest up. Not that there's anything magical about having your chest up, but when you put your chest up, you're less likely to sit back too far. You're less, more likely to sit straight up and down, and that means that you generate the range of motion necessary to get deep from flexion of the knee, of your, using your quads, which is kind of a good thing anyway, and that you don't have to round your lower back and thus have butt wink in order to hit depth. The other one is tummy out. So you literally stick your tummy out. Now you breathe in big and brace, but make sure your tummy's sticking out. And that literally is just another way of saying arch your lower back because the lower back rounding is the butt wink. So if you arch your lower back, a lot of times, even if your hips are pulling to round the lower back, if you're arching it by pushing your tummy out, you counteract that and the back ends up remaining neutral, which is a very good thing. Uh, another cue, this is a really easy one, stay upright. Okay, a lot of people who tend to bowl over, tend to round over, if you say just stay upright, lower and upper part of your upper body, keep everything upright. A lot of times butt wink is eliminated. Again, a lot of that is because their knees move further forward. They don't have to round at the hips to get low. And one cue that should be taken care of by all these, but sometimes isn't because a lot of people in training, myself included, for many, many years carry old mythologies with them. And that cue is to let the knees travel over the toes on the way down and as long as your heels are still on the ground, that's totally safe. It's super even more effective for the quads than just sitting back and not letting your knees travel over toes. The thing is you have to generate the range of motion to go deep in a squat from some joint, from some combination of joints. If you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm not going to have my knees go over my toes. I'm just going to keep it here. I still have to hit depth. That means we need more at the hip. We need more movement at the hip. And sometimes you run out of movement for a variety of other reasons. And then the lower back has to round and voila butt wink. But if we let the knees go forward as we squat down, you can stay super upright. No need for butt wink. Or more, more of the range of motion is generated at the knee, less at the hip, and thus no butt wink. So this technique solution is something that if you watch this whole video at the end and you say, oh, I wonder which one of these causes, and it could be combinatorial, it could be you have a few things going on, but if you're wondering which one of these causes is really doing it, I would, in every single case, try to remediate the technique first. Because if it's a technical cause, you don't have to like rabbit hole yourself into like, oh, fuck, I have to do stretches now, and oh, shit, my glutes are too tight, blah, blah, don't worry, that's we'll cover that. But the technique is so, at least in principle, easy to fix. It doesn't require a whole lot of work. It's just a few realizations and you practice them a few times and you're like, oh shit, 
well, goodbye butt wink. So uh, this is an easy fix. An even easier fix, however, is the next po possible cause of butt wink, mostly happens in machines, is poor foot positioning. Now, I don't really get to this uh, in this lecture, so I'll just say it now because it, it's a good thing to point out. Foot positioning can still cause butt wing problems, not on machines, with free weight squats. But then the foot positioning is like some people try to have their feet pointed too far, uh, too, too much forward, not angled out. Naturally, your feet tend to angle out. It gives you a better range of motion at the knees and the hips. A lot of times people have too close of a stance, which again, uh, in, in many ways, limits range of motion of various joints. And then it has to, your lower back has to compensate for it. And then some people go too wide. So really the solution for foot positioning for butt wink in the squat is find a position of feet just literally by experimenting with an empty bar, just a, a plate on a side of which one of these foot positions gives you the most comfort, the most power and the most ability to hit depth while staying upright and limiting your butt wink. Because you could be like, oh, fuck butt wink, but you're squatting like this or you're squatting like that. And then all of a sudden you squat like this, just as an example, not necessarily the right answer. And you're like, holy shit, I can stay completely upright. I'm like fucking Pyrrhus Demas out here. And then all, all is fixed and you're like, God damn it, I haven't really had a butt wink problem. I had a stupid technique problem. So this can definitely occur on free weights. However, it tends to occur more often with machines because with free weights, a lot of times, if you position your feet in a certain place, there's kind of more degrees of freedom so you can adjust other parts of your body and your hips maybe don't have to take the load. They don't have to take the shortened range of motion and thus they don't have to round the lower back in order to actually execute the lift. However, if you're in a hack squat or especially if you're in a leg press, there's no degrees of freedom left over. And if you position your feet poorly, your back almost has to round, right? And that's really how this happens. So you put your feet up too high on the platform. That's typically the offending act that reduces your range of motion that you're getting for the entire lift and especially reduces it to the quads, right? The range of motion at the knee is smaller. That definitely lets you lift more weight, which is sweet because then, like I've said before in other videos, finally, you do like six plates or eight plates on the leg press and that super fucking hot girl who's always like doing like stretches at the corner of the gym, she comes up to you finally after she sees it and she's got sunglasses on, right? And she's just like, and you're like, hello. And she's like, I am from Europe and specifically Sweden. And I want to have love with you. And you're like, yes. But that never is going to happen because more likely she's going to come up and be like, you're not doing proper technique and range of motion. And I don't deal with men like that. And you're like, fuck, but your accent's so hot. Oh, full range of motion. How do we do it while keeping the back safe? So here we go. If you have your feet really high on the platform, yes, you lift more weight but you get less of a quad stimulus. And you are much more likely to have a butt wink because if you go down and you're limiting your knee range of motion, the range of motion has to come from somewhere. So either you cut it completely, then no butt wink, but if you're like, okay, range of motion is good, but I put my knees real high on the platform, my knees don't have the degrees of freedom to actually flex and extend much. And thus the range of motion has to be generated somewhere, which means at some point you run into the hip problem and then your lower back starts to round. So yeah, you're getting deep, but your lower back is rounding, which is butt wink, which may not be a great thing. How do you improve this? Well, easy one is get your feet lower on the platform. How much lower? The lowest point is when your heels and toes are still pressuring on the platform. So if you get them so low that it's just your toes, there's a few problems with that. Very small chance that you could injure your calves, uh, you know, pull a calf tendon or something because if you're using, you know, 500 pounds just with your tippy toes, it might not be the brightest idea. Eh, that's not very likely. What's mostly going to happen is your body's going to reduce central force production. It's going to detect the instability, which is another reason why sissy squats might not be superior to like hack squats or leg presses. Because if you're on your tippy toes, your body just doesn't produce a whole lot of force. And thus your quads won't be as active. They won't grow as much. And then that sucks. It sure solves the butt wing problem, but it's not a very productive way of training. So I recommend going as low as you can on that leg press or hack squat plate in which your heels and toes are still producing maximum force. They're in contact with the platform. And then you will solve a lot of your butt wing problems because then the range of motion at the knees is super high and we don't have to compensate with rounding our lower back, which is butt wing itself. And sometimes you move your feet down, but then shit feels really weird. Your knees might hurt, hips might hurt. So once you move your feet down, I would play with narrower and wider positioning of the feet and turning the angle of the toes to find something that feels natural, reduces butt wink, and still gets you a great quad workout without hurting other joints. All right. Next culprit is low ankle mobility, probably in my estimate, the number one cause of butt wink, because if you think about it from like a biomechanical perspective, 
if your ankles had infinite flexibility, like if your shin, here's your foot, here's your shin, if you could do some shit like this, gee whiz, you know, you could stay completely upright, not needing any butt wink at all. Your knees would be like three fucking feet in front of your toes. You'd be doing the deepest squat in the world, look like a fucking spider or some shit, like a crab. And that would be amazing for your quads that you wouldn't be squatting a lot because it's a huge leverage disadvantage, but you'd be fucking jacked. The problem is most people they can't do that. At some point, they run out of range of motion in the calves and they start to get on their tippy toes. If they don't want to get on their tippy toes, they have to keep their heels down and then what? They keep continuing lower. And like I've said a few times already, the range of motion has to come from somewhere. You ran out of knee range of motion, you ran out of hip range of motion. If you continue to go down, the range of motion will be uh, essentially generated by your lower back, which means your pelvis is going to start rounding and then that's not very good, right? So low ankle mobility definitely a problem. How do you improve it? Well, first, this is the big one. You find, from a few of the other points, you find a really good foot position for yourself that gets, lets you get the deepest in a safest manner with good positioning. And then you practice squatting a little deeper and a little deeper or leg pressing or whatever it is over time while minding your positioning and resisting butt wink. A lot of times, that's probably the best way in a more sport-specific way in this case or task-specific way to increase mobility. And at some point, a few months or a few years later, you're going to be dunking Olympic depth squats in super range of motion, Tom Platt's leg presses, and you're going to have no butt wink at all. So a lot of it's just slow incremental practice. Like at first you squat to here and you're like, that's all I got. Then here, then here, then here, then here. A couple months later, you're fucking down here. You're golden. That's really how I did it for the most part. You can also stretch your calves regularly, which will also get them more jacked. So enjoy. When you're doing your calf training, you should be going through a full range of motion and really stretching the very deepest part for like a second or two. That's going to improve the flexibility of your calves and it's going to get you extra super jacked. Another thing is when you're warming up for squats, leg presses or hack squats, what you can do is stretch your calves during and between warm-up sets so that you know, yeah, stretching a lot of times doesn't convey as much flexibility improvement over time as we would like ideally. But acute stretching, interestingly enough, if you stop on a vibration plate, you get an insane acute stretching response. The only thing the plate does seemingly for like $10,000, don't know if I can get one. Uh, but if you stretch acutely, like stretch uh, for a few 30 second rounds between your warm up sets of squats or leg presses, you may be able to get like an inch more of range of motion there it doesn't last. It's like the next day you wake up and it's more or less the same tiny bit of improvement. But you don't fucking need it to last. You just need it to get you through the workout. And a lot of times that can work really, really, really fucking well. Lastly, get weightlifting shoes. Just fucking get them. What kind? Any kind. The shit's with the heel. Olympic weightlifting shoes, right? Or the sport of weightlifting. One word, shoes. Um, don't get, man, I don't want to talk shit about companies specifically. But here I go. Atomics. I don't understand the fucking point of that shoe. It looks cool. looks like you're from the 90s bodybuilding, but it actually covers your ankle completely. So it does the opposite of what we want to do here. Uh, so get weightlifting shoes. The heel super fucking helps. And then with whatever ankle mobility you do have, now you seemingly have more because of the heel. And it's super stable and it's high friction. It's all the fucking best things in the world. All right. Next up, poor glute flexibility, which especially if you're an adult dancer. Hey, Scott, what's another term for stripper that's uh, politically correct? Just dancer, right? Uh, it's the Chippendale. Dancer. Dancer. It's like you were saying you hang out with a bitch and you're like, what do you do? And she's like, I'm a dancer. You're like, uh, like on Broadway. And she's like, mm. you're like, ah, ah. You know what I'm saying? You want to go back to my place? Shit, we can dance all night, so to speak. In any case. I don't know if this is a little, am I allowed to say shit like this on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. related to adult dancing, poor glute flexibility. So how does it happen? It's just usually genetic. Um, and you just have tight glutes and sometimes your glutes will run out of space. So glutes will be like, eh, that's it. That's all you get to bend. And the lower back will take the rest. It just happens. And how do you improve? Again, from the earlier point, just going slowly deeper over time really, really, really helps because it's loaded stretching, which is awesome for hypertrophy and gets you more flexible and mobile. Using pauses is a great idea. So if your butt wink starts, like if you're coming down here, uh, knee joint, if you're going down here and your butt wink starts, go down to just at that level at which you're about to begin and pause for like three seconds and then come up. Pause squats, right? Or pause leg press or pause hacks. 
And actually every rep that you do or every like two or three reps in a set, you'll be able to go a little deeper. And every set in a workout, you'll be able to go a little deeper. And then every workout that you come back to still shallower than the end of the last workout. So like a deeper, deeper, deeper through the workout, you come back next workout, you'll be back here, not as high. They're sorry, not as low, but a little bit lower than before. And over months and months and months, you can actually get considerably deeper, <clears throat> work on your glute flexibility. And again, that's a huge side benefit as you get fucking big ass glutes because uh, loaded stretch is really, really awesome. You can also do the thing we do with calves where uh, between warm up sets, you can do dedicated glute stretches. Um, if you, I don't have any examples for you, I'd have to get out of the chair and you guys know I'm <laughs> unable to do that. Somebody called me uh, an Instagram, a sit down comedian. I thought that was brilliant. Um, it's only partially correct because while I am sitting, sitting down, I'm, I'm not that funny. But, but I'm not getting up and show you guys glute stretches. YouTube's not ready for that shit. Uh, however, if you Google glute stretches, just make sure to do it at work when there's other people walking around. It's always fun to try to explain shit like that. But in any case, if you do glute stretches between sets, Hey, by the time you get to your working sets, and even if you do them between working sets, yes, your power production reduces, but we're here to do bodybuilding shit, so we're not so worried about that. You will be able to get marginally lower, lower over time, things will be good. Sorry, uh, I want you guys to have all the pertinent info, and every now and again, I think of some shit that I didn't put in the slides. If you want the best uh, ankle mobility and the best glute, best glute mobility, and one of those two things or both is keeping you from uh, properly executing squats and leg press without butt wink. What I recommend is stretching like three to six times a week. You ain't training calves three to six times a week. You're sure as shit not training quads three to six times a week, I hope. Uh, so you will sometimes do the flexibility training in the warm up, but also I would say every other workout for flexibility uh, stretches should be just done like in the morning or midday or evening, whenever you can relax, like watch some TV, do some stretches. That really adds up, okay? Like gymnasts are super flexible. They don't get that way by doing stretches once or twice a week, but they do the shit fucking six days a week. So you don't have to do six, but maybe do three, maybe do four, see how it works. All right, bone structure. How does it happen? Well, some people have relatively shallow hip sockets so that they're... Uh, femurs can move quite a bit. Some people have deeper hip sockets. This is like, fuck animation. We don't need that shit around here. And then the other femur doesn't move all that much. Uh, for an ex exaggerated effect, right? If your femur only moved this much, holy fucking shit, you could barely walk. But some people who have deeper hip sockets can't move their femur much. And if you're going down deep in a squat or leg press and you run out of femoral motion, then you have to, if you continue to insist on going lower, the range of motion has to come from somewhere. It's either gonna come from your ankles, knees, no more femur, so the hip is gone. Now it's lower back. Now you get butt wink. And that sucks. <laughs> How do you improve it? Um, the fundamental reality is that there's really no way to improve that, but you can know your limits and squat around them. So if you've tried all the other things and maybe you went really crazy and got some MRI shit or some x-rays done and a sports medicine doc's like, yeah, you have the fucking world's deepest hip sockets, so sorry. Um, then you can just... Uh, work within the range that you're okay with and understand that butt wink is something that you're not going to be able to improve upon outside of maybe getting weightlifting shoes and changing your foot position and all the other stuff that doesn't require you to fuck with everything else. So this is a shitty one and it happens to some people. I will say it's much more rare than many people would insist. Most people, if they apply all the other strategies and especially the technique thing and moving their feet up and down on the platform, there's a huge fraction of people will be able to squat and leg press as deep as possible and you're fucking all the way down with a, two, a totally upright back, no problem. And some people do, in fact, have deeper hip sockets and there's not much to do about that. However, however, uh, you guys know I'm a sports physiologist, but I'm dabbling in medicine and especially experimental robot surgery. So if you want to leave something in the comments, give me a convincing story from the heart as to why you should be candidate for for my experimental hip socket ablation laser guided and laser performed procedure. Um, some anesthesia is involved, not mandatory. Uh, I know some things about how the body looks, so I won't totally fuck it up. What happened to the other three candidates for surgery? My lawyer says it's not a good idea for me to talk about that. And those people will never talk again. <laughs> they can't talk when they're dead. Anyway, when is, so, so we've remediated a lot of this. We've learned a ton so far about what to do about butt wink, but let's talk really quick about, we haven't even addressed this. Is butt wink bad or is it fine? Because there's a bit of gray area and I think we can get a lot of traction here. So when is butt wink bad? 
Because, you know, there's like that paranoid butt wink crowd on social media that anytime you have a semblance of butt wink, they're like, eh, Dr. Mike, you're going to fucking die. Like, here lies Dr. Mike Isratel, owner of 18 and a half Lamborghinis, a former owner. And no, no, owner, I'll be buried with them. And uh, d- uh, cause of death, butt wink. That's how it works. And then there's other people that are like, who gives a shit, man? Techniques, bullshit. You just fucking train in range of motion, get strong, and they're like candy caning everything. And you're like, oh. Orthopedic surgeons do need to make money, so thank God you exist. In any case, when is butt wink bad? When is it maybe not so bad? So it's not so great when your lower back is getting strained over time when rounded. Like you're doing your leg presses, your lower back's rounding, you're like, ow, fuck. And you can barely get out of the machine. You're like, fuck. And three days later, you feel better, and you're like, Time to leg press, I guess, again, and you fucking hurt it again. Not a good sign. Another one is when the butt wink is visually very pronounced. So if your fucking lower back's like, whoop, maybe you still feel fine, but one of these days, one fucking vertebrae is going to pop out of your asshole, and then what, right? Now, there's very low risk, but higher risk than you might want. Um, you know, it's kind of like if you have a friend that drives super dangerous, like weaves in and out of cars, or like 95 miles an hour, you, know, you could say, oh, well, I haven't gotten hurt yet. And you're like, no, nah, that's true. But just visually assessing the situation, I don't estimate the probability of you continuing not to hurt yourself as very high. So maybe we can slow the fuck down and you not be insane. That would be great. So if your butt wings are really fucking gnarly visually, you just look at it like, oh, you look at a video of yourself and you're like, Mm-mm-mm. there's another Christian about this video. And maybe it's not that great. And maybe you could start to work on it. Another one is <laughs> no brainer here. When your lower back is hurting more and more each week, like week one of squats, when you had butt wink, it was fine. Week two, you're like, mm, feel a little something. Week three, you're like stiff for a few days. Week four, I'm like fucking physically hurting. And then the last one is the, the worst one. It is when you detect pain that's shooting down in your legs uh, during and or after a session in which you experience butt wink. That means that something is happening that involves your spinal cord and the spinal nerves. And that's real, no way, no bad news. You don't want to have anything fucking do with that sciatica. Is a motherfucker. Anyone of you who has experienced sciatica before, uh, feel free to talk about it in the comments. It fucking blows. It's nothing you ever want. And when you have any kind of of spinal nerve or spinal injury, even if it's relatively mild, most of the time you make a complete recovery and you never fucking think about it again, there's a small percent chance that it'll fuck you for the rest of your life. And not even in a big way, just in a small way where you're always like, is this the rep that's going to fucking get me? And it blows. It's nothing you you want. I've herniated a disc before. Uh, not exactly with butt wink. I actually was doing too much overhead pressing with an arched back and chest, and I ended up uh, just kind of irritating my SI joint. And in order to comp- – this sounds dumb as fuck. In order to compensate for that, when I was squatting, I couldn't stay as upright anymore, so I started rounding my lower back because it actually felt better. And then one time, I, that rounding really got to me, and I herniated a disc in my lower back, some of the worst pain of my entire life. It got better. It took a few months. Um, Within weeks, I was training legs again, but extensions and super upright lunges and very, very light squats. And um, I would use weightlifting shoes and stand on a a, a little plate. So it took a while for me to get my groove back. But I still, TMI, (laughs) this is a really high level TMI. There is a part of my inner glute, which none of you motherfuckers is ever going to see, unless you're on my uh, Mostly fans and then you see it every day. Uh, that I actually can't feel. So if I like uh, take my own finger and rub my inner glute, God damn, what the fuck are we talking about here, right? Um, I can't feel it. Like I can feel my finger because I have fucking nerves working on my finger, but the nerves in my inner glute on my left side, they don't work anymore. And that's instantly happened when I fucking heard you this because the nerves are sitting there and the disc is like, ah, and they're just like gone. So it's not some shit you want. Now, I don't want to scare the fuck out of you guys. This is all super, super low risk. But if you can take very reasonable, easy steps to mitigate it, you should. Now, when is butt wink probably okay, nothing to worry about, and nothing to even try to do anything about? First, when it's visually not profound. Like, if there's a very lively debate about whether or not you actually see butt wink in your videos, you fucking fine. I guess some people are like, your back went from arch like this to arch like this. You're butt winking. You're going to fucking die. Like, nah, <laughs> you're good, okay? Unless it's really profound, it's probably not an issue. Um, multiple studies have been done on this. And uh, as usual, Greg Knuckles and company did like a really cool lit review where they showed that like spinal flexion to a certain degree happens in almost every, even externally visually good technique lift. And it's nothing to worry about. Like extreme spinal flexion, probably bad with heavy loads, but limited amount, it's nothing to worry about, right? So if you have to ask, "Mm, do I have butt wink? 
The answer is probably you're fine, right? Another one is when there's no pain associated with it at all. That doesn't mean that, it, again, if it's visually profound, I would try to curb that enthusiasm anyway. But if it looks okay and there's no pain, and you're like, do I have butt wink? Well, no, you're probably totally fine. And if it feels normal, Sometimes there's no pain associated, but someone's like, do you feel like your back is rounding? You're like, mm. when I hit the bottom of that squad, I fucking like, shit, I feel, ooh, this is a stretch. It's not a painful stretch, but I can tell some other shit's going on. If it feels normal, if it's not feeling like it's compromising any joints or anything's moving weird, if you can check all three of these boxes, man, I probably just wouldn't worry about it at all. I wouldn't worry about it in any case. I wouldn't even take any steps to remediate it because I don't think there's anything to remediate here. All right. So, and just to end on a, a good little recommendations note, how do you decide uh, on your own butt wink process? That's right, we have a process. So if it if you're checking any of the bad boxes, especially a few, what are those bad boxes? Like your lower back is getting strained or it's experiencing progressive pain over workouts or visually the butt wink looks really insane. I would retool technique and positioning to avoid or greatly minimize butt wink. Again, it doesn't have to go to zero, but just have to go into checking the good boxes when it's not visually profound, no pain associated with it, and it feels relatively normal, right? And if it only checks the okay boxes, then you can always be a bit more upright during quad moves, mostly because that's going to improve your stimulus to fatigue ratio from the quads. It's going to let your knees uh, travel out more and it's going to get you a better quad workout. But uh, you just don't have much to worry about. So if you're not really checking the boxes of butt wink, it's nothing I would lose sleep over. Folks, thank you for tuning in. Um, like, subscribe, donate to my OnlyFans Patreon. That's right. That's a thing. Yo, Scott, how is that not a thing? It's like you donate, but you're not guaranteed porn. Yeah, it's not guaranteed porn. That's why it's not a thing. Anyway, Fox Swipe, Fucker, which is the Twitter of sex. I'll see you on all those platforms. I've said enough. See you guys later. Hey, guys. Do you want to hear more about squat technique, especially if your knees should go over your toes or not? Check out this video right here, and maybe you'll learn something.